Hello. Hi everyone, how are you? Hello. Hi. Hi everyone. Hello, I'm Aina. I'm one of the embryologists of Repro Clinic. And I've been here some days doing some videos, some Instagram live TV. Today I'm going to chat about embryo transfers. All right. I'm just going to, to chat a bit about the process and how it's done, how the doctor does it and how we do our part over there. If you have any questions, you can always answer here, like ask the question here and I will read it and try to answer. All right. And first of all, what's the embryo, embryo transfer? When we do an embryo transfer, what we are doing is we are putting back an embryo to the, to the mother bone. All right. And so we are putting back that embryo and then in 10 days, we are going to see if there's pregnancy or not. That's going to tr happen when we do the transfer at day five. All right. We normally do embryo transfers at day five at blastocyst stage. That's not common for us to do it at day three or day two. And we normally do it at day five. When we do it at day three, it would be just exceptional cases and for some exceptional reasons, nothing else. Normally we do it at day five. That's because um, on the blastocyst stage, we know more about the quality of the embryo. And then as we know more about the quality of the embryo, we are more able to choose which embryo to transfer. And if we are able to know more about the quality and to choose better, then our implantation rates will increase. That's the only thing. So we are quite critical over there, trying to, to get that embryo that's the best embryo back and to put that embryo in terms of have a pregnancy at the end. We can either do embryo transfers in fresh or frozen embryo transfers. In, in a fresh cycle, when we achieve day five, in the early morning, embryologists will check the embryos and how they are, all right? And then we will grade them and see how many we have at the blastocyst state, which one is better than the other one, all right? And then we'll grade them and put them like kind of in support. So it would be like, this is our favorite one. This is the second, this is the third, etc. So in the early morning, we will have kind of a, a vision of what's going to happen. So maybe we are going to put one embryo back and then the other ones are going to be frozen, etc. But it's never like for sure 100%. So we will have kind of a vision of what, what we're going to have. But embryos at blastocyst state, state change a lot. They have lots of cells when they achieve blastocyst state, so it's quite easy for them to, to change a lot in a few hours. So that's why we would never freeze embryos before the tra transfer is done. We would wait until the transfer, and then once we do the transfer, we will freeze the rest of them. And we will uh, always recheck the rest of them because maybe we have a few more to freeze or maybe we're going to change the order and one that it was not the best in the early morning, maybe it's, it's, it's the best at that point. All right. I'm so sorry, I don't speak French. And I'm really sorry. I can, I can write something about the embryo transfer to be in the block maybe and and the girls to translate it but i i do not speak french so i'm afraid it needs to be in either english or spanish catalan but i do not speak french sorry so what i was saying it's day five we check them early in the morning we know a bit what will be happening that day but it's never until the transfer is done that we actually choose that best one to be transferred and then the other ones to be freeze <laughs> i'm sorry and how we choose them at the blasters stage I, i've been talking some days about the embryo quality but they they need to achieve blasters stage at day five 
they have time until day six, but we would always prefer an embryo that has achieved blastocyst stage at day five than one that has achieved it at day six, even though maybe the quality might seem better. And the other, the one at day five would have achieved that stage before, so that thing makes them better. All right. How we grade them? As I've been saying it in, in other chats and videos, we grade them first of all in numbers and then it's two letters. The number mean the rate of expansion of that blastocyst. And then the two letters, the first one, it's related to the inner cell mass quality and the second one to the trophectoderm quality. Inner cell mass, it's the first letter. And that's what's going to be the proper baby. And then trophectoderm is the second letter and that's what's going to be the placenta. Both of them need to be um, good. It, if one is good and the other one is not, it, it won't implant it, it won't make it. Both of them needs to be have great quality. Top quality would be an AA, then we have Bs, and then we would have C. We would not freeze an embryo that it's C quality. And then the number just means the grade of expansion. It doesn't really have any relation with the quality. It's just of the grade of expansion of the blastocyst. When the embryo chief blastocyst states, they start to form a cavity. While they form that cavity, they start to expand and to get bigger and bigger because all of the cells are getting um, divided. So in a blastocyst state, we have quite a lot of cells. So the division gets really fast at that point. So the cavity gets bigger and bigger. And we also have um, a zone that it's protect that zone it's protected the embryo all the days before the stage of blastocyst, but at blastocyst stage, when it would be, for example, number three, it's, an, it's a blastocyst that it's starting that expansion, but it's not um, completely expanded yet. So that would be three. And then that zone that, that surrounds the, the embryo, it's quite thick still. When the embryo is fully expand, you can see that the zone gets really, really thin. That would be a four and the cavity gets really, really big. So you can really differ what's the inner cell mass and what's going to be, what and what's the trophectoderm. Then five would be that the proper blastocyst has make a, a little hole in that zone and it starts hatching. So it starts because the embryo needs to pop out of that zone in terms to implant. And then six would mean that the whole blastocyst have already popped and hatched from the that zone, right? So it would be at day five when we actually choose which embryo is better than the other based on that quality. And then obviously at day six, we would check the rest of the embryos and see if we have something more to freeze or not. But in a transfer, we would always go for the embryo that achieved, has achieved blastocyst stage at day five rather than some, some that has achieved blastocyst stage at day six. And if that's it. If this happens when it's in fresh embryo transfer, so early in the morning we check, we see what's going on. Then just before the transfer, we do the final decision. It's really, really important. It it's even something that's not, but choosing which one, which embryo to put back, it's one of the most critical parts because you need to be really good at choosing that and be quite critical to what to choose and what to freeze and what to discard because. You cannot freeze embryos that are not have not really good quality. Doesn't make any sense because that embryos will be thought at some point to do another transfer. So that's quite important. An embryo needs to be frozen, then thought, and then needs to be transferred and has need to still have that implantation potential and and the potential to actually become a baby. So that's quite that's quite important. All right, so that's a decision that normally we can. We do um, both of the embryologies together. So it's not, if you're alone, you'll do it alone. But if you have your colleague over there, it's something that you will always discuss and try to make sure that what you're, the embryo that you're putting back, it's, it's that embryo and the good one. And then if it's an, in a cryo transfer, two hours before the transfer, we are going to thaw the embryo 
when we freeze the embryos, as I, I've told you, we always choose the first, the second, the third, apart from the grade, we always put them like, grade them first, second, third, so to have an order in terms of the, the day that we're doing to, to thaw that, to know which is the best embryo, because sometimes you have two embryos that they have exactly the same quality. But when you look at them, you can know which one is much better. But on paper, maybe you have two, five AAs or, or two, five AB, AB. And then if you just, if we just only put that, we won't have like that more information that you have when, when you actually say, see them. So that's quite important for us to, apart from to grade them, to put them in order, in like a thawing order in terms to know actually which one to throw before. All right. And then it would be the actually transfer procedure. What's the transfer procedure? The transfer procedure happens in theater and it's something that happens between the doctor and the embryologist. Both of them are there. And also you have a nurse. The nurse is going to do a, um, an echo to see exactly where we're putting the embryo. It's, it's quite important to know where we're putting the embryo to be sure that we are putting the embryo exactly in the nice part of the endometrium to not be touching the end, but just to be there. All right, that's the doctor part. So the doctor would um, would put a ca the catheter. I'm, I'm just going to show you, but <laughs> oh, thank you so much, <laughs> thank you so much, and just the. the the catheter, the doctor has one catheter and the embryologist has another one. All right. So the doctor will, first of all, canalize that catheter, okay, without an embryo. So over there, we have all the time in the wall. I know the embryo transfer is a procedure that might not, it's not really comfy. Normally, we ask, ask the patients to have the full bladder, so that's less comfy because you have a speculum and you have full bladder and someone is kind of, actually pressing you in terms of the image to, to see well. So that's not the, and it's something, it's a moment where people is stressed and that's completely fine. And that's, that's the most normal because that's the point where actually we're putting back an embryo. So that's really, really important. But the doctor at the moment that the doctor is canalizing and trying to put the outer catheter in, the embryo is still in the incubators, in the mink, so we have all the time that we want over there. And it's much better to, to take the time and actually to see that we are going to put the embryo exactly where it needs to be than to rushing over there, trying to get it fast. So the time needs to be done. As Here I'll show you, we have actually two different catheters. Doctor will choose one or the other based on on, on, on how it's easier for them to, to get there, all right, and to pass through the cervix. Here, this is one of the catheters. This is the catheter that the doctor will have, all right, and this is the catheter that the embryology will have. It's actually this. As you can see here, it's quite, and this part, it's not that soft and the doctor one, it's a bit more rigid. They are going to put this one first. This thing, the doctor can move it up and down just based on how huge or large is what they need to do, all right, and how they need to get there. And with this, they can know if they are getting, where they are getting. With the image, they can see exactly how far they can be and if they are touching the end or not, and they are putting the embryo exactly on the part that it needs to be. And this is the embryology one. So when the doctor has this catheter in, and they are in and exactly point that they want, the embryology, the embryologist will put the embryo here in the catheter, this in the top end. I don't know if you can actually see. This is quite small all right I do, well so here we would put like a little bit of media and the embryo in and here i don't know if you can see 
these are some marks. These marks means when we achieve that mark, it means that this part is going out of the other one. That's the outer, that's the inner. So the doctor will have it like this. The embryology will go this. And this catheter should get in. And at some point, we'll go out here, all right? This is what we're going to start seeing at the image, um, in the scan image. That's what you actually see, guys. And here, as you can see, while you get to the this mark, the black one, we start getting out here. So the embryology will normally start saying, this is the first mark, the second mark, and, and the first mark or the second mark. And when the doctor is exactly where they want to be, they fix this and the embryology just push the syringe. So the media goes out with the embryo. So in the scan, you will see like a little sparking spot, quite white. And that's where the media is with the embryo. When we go back, the doctor just remove it like this and remove everything. And it's our job to check that actually the embryo has gone with the media. Because sometimes it can happen that the embryo gets stuck at the end in the catheter. So it's really important to actually check that the embryo has gone out and actually it's transferred. If it hasn't and we need to repeat the that transfer, that's completely fine. Sometimes it happens and that's it. But obviously it's really, really important to check and to be checking for a while and then to see, okay, the embryo is inside, everything is perfect. And now just fingers crossed and, and hope it works. All right. This is one of the catheters, and then the other one is this one. That's quite exactly the same, but it's another one. That's the part of the doctor, and that's the part of the embryologist. This one, all of it, it's quite flungy, but it has exactly the same marks, and how it works is exactly the same. The doctor will analyze with this one, and then embryologist will put this one, and then both the work together will move it until it gets out from here and then no it's quite difficult with one hand all right and then as the marks get it starts to get out and then we will push the media with the embryo and then transfer it's done always check sometimes it gets quite difficult to canalize and, and it can happen it's quite normal it's nothing about what can I do to make an embryo transfer easier for the doctor or for the embryologist and to do it like faster? It's sometimes it just happens. Just try to not get stressed and, and relax. It's quite difficult to relax at the transfer moment because it's quite complicated to be relaxed over there. We know it's it's the moment where we are putting the embryo back. So it's quite it's quite an important moment for everyone. All right. And the thing is that don't get stressed while the doctor is canalizing and the embryo is still in the incubator. So we have all the time that we want over there. And then when the, the doctor is already in, it's really fast to, to get in the catheter because we have the outer. So to get the inner in, it just we have this guide. So it's completely fine and easy. All right. And if the embryo goes back and we need to repeat it, that's also common and that's quite normal. So don't get worried if that happened to your transfer. It's just really important to check if actually it has happened or not and the embryo is it's back or not. Because with the scan, we can all, all only see the spot with the media, but nothing else. So we cannot obviously see the embryo with the scan. We would just see the the media so it's quite important to actually check that that embryo that we're putting back is over there all right that would be everything about the embryo transfer another important thing that just remind and normally we ask the bladder to be full when we are doing an embryo transfer that's quite important try to do your homework over there because if the bladder is full it it press the uterus and even though the moment of the transfer might be really uncomfortable because someone is pressing you and you kind of have, have a full bladder so you actually would need to go to the loo that would press the uterus and then the 
the path it's easier to get there that's why and just obviously remember that it's a procedure that happens in the theater so no perfume no makeup and but that's also for the egg collection all right and that's it pretty much i don't know if anyone has any questions about embryo transfers and how we do it i've tried to explain as much as i could about how we do it it's it's quite a magic moment on embryo transfer and it's really nice that happens because like between doctors and embryologists like all together trying to put that embryo back it's not that easy to achieve um a good quality blastocyst so when we have it it's really important to put it exactly where it needs to be in terms of ending a pregnancy that's what at the end we all want and obviously we can have it in fresh or frozen as i've said i've also explained a little bit about the quality and how we do it and how we try to do our best as just grading the embryos that's really really important that's a really important moment to, to actually choose which one to put back and what which one to freeze. And that's it. If you, if you have any questions, just write here if you can. I can I can replay. If not, you can always contact us by email. Our email is labreproclinic at reproclinic.com. Alright. And we will be more than I'm happy to, to reply all your questions. All right. Um, that's everything. It's been a pleasure. Take care and see you soon. Bye.